everybody and welcome to AstroTap, the place where we use astrology to tap into your destiny. So today we're going to talk about the rising sign and the rising sign can also be called the ascendant. So bear this in mind when you're checking out your own birth chart and also if you hear me switching from rising sign to ascendant in this video because I have a tendency to do that, it means the same thing. So the rising sign is a sign that was rising on the western horizon at the moment you were born and I specify it's the moment you were born. So to know your rising sign you need your time of birth and your place of birth and it's so important to get these accurate because the rising sign changes approximately every two hours. So when you were born and you took in that first breath you were breathing in the qualities of that rising sign. It's your first impressions of the world. And whatever sign your rising sign falls in was the energy you felt when you first became a human being. So the rising sign is how you see the world. So it's the filter that you see the world through. It's the best way you know how to navigate your life. And as we know, life is a mirror. So the energy that you put out is the energy that you get back. So your rising sign is also the way that you appear to other people. Now the rising sign is so important in your birth chart because the rising sign really is the door into your reality and it's also the doors into each house in your natal birth chart. So for instance, first house, rising sign, first door, you the way you navigate the world and the way that you appear to others. Second house, your value systems. What in life do you need to feel secure and to feel stable? Third house, your mindset, your communication and so on and so on. But to build this house system and understand your birth chart at a personal level, this rising sign builds up the rest of your birth chart. And because the rising sign has a lot to do with your first impressions, it has a lot to do with your first steps in life. So it can also indicate the energy around your childhood. And the rising sign can also indicate your physical appearance. So a lot of people will hold physical traits from their rising sign. And this makes it so much easier for people to guess your rising sign before they actually guess like your sun sign or your moon sign or your Venus sign because the rising sign really guards those more intimate placements. The rising sign can also indicate the energy around your birth. So your journey down the birth canal and the rising sign can also indicate the way that you rise every morning. So the way that you wake up because when you open your eyes in the morning, a new day is born. So a lot can be said about somebody's morning routine when you look at their rising sign. Now, another thing to take into consideration is the planet that rules your rising sign. So for instance, if you're an Aries rising, Mars is the planet that rules your rising sign. And whatever planet rules your rising sign is actually your whole chart ruler. So every house will have a little aspect of this Mars energy. Now we're not really gonna go into this in this video, but I will tell you each planet that rules each sign. And I will do a future video on this. Another thing to take into consideration is if you have your birth chart handy, check whether you have any planets conjunct your ascendant. Now a conjunct means any planets 10 degrees away from your ascendant. I'll pop a chart example up here or here. <laughs> and as you can see in this chart, it is my chart <laughs> because I am a prime example for this because as you can see, I have Uranus conjunct the ascendant, Neptune conjunct the ascendant, the moon conjunct the ascendant and the north node conjunct the ascendant. Now any planets that are conjunct the ascendant in the 12th house, you will have some past life connection to those planets and those energies. So for instance, my persona will be very Capricorn-esque, so Saturn-like, Neptune-like and Uranian-like. So it's a bit of a mixed bag there. <laughs> And any planets underneath, you will have those traits, but they will be less seen and more personal to you. Again, I will do a future video on this just to explain this a bit better, but it is something to check out. And if you do find that you have any planets conjunct your ascendant, check the sign that goes with each planet. And you can also watch the video for that sign as well. So, in this video, I will go through 
your general traits, your physical appearance regarding your rising sign, your journey down the birth canal, I will try and predict that. Maybe you want to chat to your mum or something to find out the deets and how you rise and shine each morning. But first, I will be showing you a few celebrities which share your rising sign just so that you have some examples. And I've chosen reality TV stars because the rising sign is that first sign that people are going to see when they meet you. And as mentioned, you are hiding your more intimate chart placements behind that rising sign. So when you're a reality TV star, you are probably going to show the traits of your rising sign before you get to the nitty gritty, like the moon sign. So you may see someone's moon sign if they get triggered, but day to day when they've got a camera in their face, you're gonna see their rising sign. Hey Taurus Risings and Ascendants, let's take a look at the reality TV stars which share your rising slash ascendant sign. So you have Joey Turner from TOWIE, Gigi Hadid, who is the daughter of Yolanda Hadid from The Real Housewives. So I love The Real Housewives, but I've never seen The Real Housewives series where Yolanda Hadid was in there. So I am sure that Gigi Hadid made her appearances in there and everyone knows who Gigi is. She's a fabulous model, but yes, we're using her as the example for The Real Housewives and she is a Taurus rising. And also we have Camila Cabello who rose to fame from X Factor. So Taurus rising, you are an earth sign rising sign. So the earth sign rising signs outlook on life is really, a little bit materialistic and I don't mean that as any shade you're constantly trying to build value in your life and stability and there ain't nothing wrong with that it's kind of work comes first and play comes second now because the planet that rules your rising sign also rules your whole birth chart and determines the theme around your birth chart you have a lovely planet ruling your birth chart. So you have Venus. Now, it is said by some astrologers, including myself, that the Earth rules Taurus. Because when you think about Taurus, you think about building stability, value, nourishment, and beauty. And when you think of Venus, it is a bit of a barren land. Venus has a high vibration, but it doesn't really look beautiful. And then when you look at the Earth, whew, there is no planet more beautiful than the Earth in our solar system. And I really do feel like Taurus is the epitome of beauty, natural beauty. As well, the Earth has so many valuable resources. Taurus is all about those valuable resources. Duh, it works, right? It's totally legit. To save complication, we are going to talk about Venus because Venus is still your co-ruler, even though I personally believe that the Earth rules Taurus. Now you're also a fixed sign. So that means you're very stable and when you make a decision in life, you stick to it. You may be somebody who sticks to the same job for a very long time. You may be somebody who sticks to relationships for a very long time. Because whenever you give something your heart, you virtually invest. It also means you're very slow to make decisions because when you invest, you truly invest. So you don't want to invest in a stock or share that's going to collapse instantly. Same with a relationship. You don't want to invest into a relationship that's only gonna last like three months. Like you've given that person your all. So yes, as a Taurus rising, you may be somebody who's known to have a very stable lifestyle. The kind of person that people look at and just think goals. That person's worth everything they've got and they're living a life of luxury. And if you're Taurus rising and you're not currently living a life of luxury, you're probably very young and you just haven't got there yet. Believe me, you have all the tools in the box to have everything you want and live your dreams. I absolutely love Taurus. It's my favorite sign of the zodiac. And I will say that until the day I die. <laughs> you guys tend to be extremely elegant, eloquent. You love nice things. 
And this is where you get that misconception that you're materialistic, but it's not that. It's just you like to feel good. You like to feel comfortable in your environment and you build your life around that. You don't really expect anyone else to give you that comfort. You don't really expect anyone to give you that value. You build that yourself and you like to enjoy life. Taurus is all about those senses. So you like to incorporate taste, I can't, what are the senses? And this need for value and luxury is because you like to stop and smell the roses. You move slow through life so that you can enjoy every moment. Now this makes you very plan orientated. You are the kind of person who's always got a five year plan. You've probably even got a 10 year plan. And if you've got a 15 year plan, well, holler down below and let me know. Nothing makes you feel more satisfied than feeling safe. You build your life around safety. And for safety, you need to have a stable house that you know you're not going to lose. So you may be somebody who really aims towards or owns your own property, even multiple properties. You're somebody who needs a stable income. You may even be somebody who works multiple jobs. Like you may have a passion, but you also work a job alongside that, which brings in a regular monthly income. If you were just being a YouTuber on a fly like me, <laughs> you would feel extremely unstable, uncomfortable. It doesn't mean you can't be a successful creator because you can, but you will be very adamant that you need that other job on the side so that you know that you have a certain amount of money coming in every month. Now this makes you very stable to be around. People like to be around you because you put them back into alignment and whenever somebody's around you you're going to give them a nice experience. You're the friend that will invite your friends around and you will cook them all an amazing meal. You don't mind hosting, you don't mind making everyone feel the love and the comfort and the beauty and the elegance of everything that is you. Now, you're so hardworking and you're so determined and this is why you do really well in jobs that require investments. You do your diligence before you invest anything. And I mean, that's anything, even invest to cook a meal at night. And you like to invest in things that are gonna be long lasting, even clothing. You may be somebody who decides to buy designer clothing over cheaper clothing because you think about all the pros and cons to that item of clothing. You want that clothing to be in your wardrobe in 20 years time. So you're going to buy the best. You're gonna buy quality. You're gonna be interested in quality items, quality investments and quality people. You know what you want when you want it and you've got a sorry not sorry kind of attitude. And again, it is because you do your due diligence whenever it comes to any decision making in life. So if somebody goes against your decision, you're very stubborn with that decision because you've waited a long time to make that decision and you've weighed up all the pros and the cons. But something that Taurus Risings need to be aware of is assessment. You can make a decision, but you need to have that freedom to make assessments on the decisions because life changes and it flows. And because you're so fixed, sometimes you find it easier to do that thing, keep it there. You don't feel like it's gonna change, but life flows. So you have to be aware that assessments need to be made. But this is such a lovely energy to have ruling your chart because you really do have that supermodel VIP kind of energy. You've got amazing taste, you know what looks good, you know what feels good, and you know how to project that on other people. So you like nice things, you like to be seen as a nice thing. But alongside that, you are calming, you are polite and Taurus risings, including Mercury's, Venus's, they tend to have really nice voices. You could actually be a natural singer. Taurus energy is great when it comes to things like YouTube and podcasts and things like that because just when you're talking normally, you tend to have this very calming energy on other people. So the Taurus rising appearance, you're all stunningly beautiful like natural beauty. As I said, it's that supermodel placement. And if you're a Taurus rising, you don't feel beautiful, then you've probably got body dysmorphia or something because genuinely you are 
when you know how beautiful the earth is, you know how you take a picture of yourself with an iPhone and you look at it and go, oh my gosh. But then you take a picture of a scene, like a field or a mountain or a forest with an iPhone and it's beautiful, like breathtakingly beautiful. That's you. <laughs> You'll probably have a very symmetrical face as well. You may have like a wider set face, so maybe even wider set eyes, but this gives you a stunning symmetry to your face. Your body is uber femme, and if you're a man, it's uber masculine. And Taurus risings are always very well dressed. Taurus placements, including the rising sign, have a very strong attention to the details. So when it comes to the way you dress, it may be very simple, but there'll be emphasis on the stitching or a very tiny logo. And that's what brings that classiness to you. You don't wear big brands, just printed all over a top. Like you, this to you, I don't know whether this would be your thing but you'd like it if it was like this, but there was a tiny bit of stitching maybe on the, on the sleeve saying Aries, potentially. But going back to your body and your physical features, you do tend to have like more broader bodies and that doesn't mean that you're big. It's just if you are a woman, you may be quite curvy, like that uber feminine kind of big bust, tiny waist, big hips, like, everything is in the right place and the same with guys you may be a bit more broader you may be the kind of people to have like a v going on when it comes to your physical body but this also means that you do have the tendency to put on a bit of weight taurus does like their food and you may need to work out and things like that when it comes to keeping your body slim but you have just this absolutely beautiful physique like you women you have the tiny tiny waists and just like the body that i dream for but also because you have those broader features you may have like a broader nose and a flatter nose like if you look at Gigi hadid like she has a broad face her eyes are quite set apart and she has this like flatter, broader nose, but it's still a petite nose. Like a bull has that wider set nose because the bull rules Taurus, by the way. I didn't even mention that. But yeah, you have very competent features, extremely good to look at, very pleasant and very like wifey, hubby kind of energy you're the person that people want to procreate with you're not the person that they want to have a good role around with even though i'm sure you can give them that and it's all good but they look at you and they're like right i want to wife you or husband you like you are everything i want in my offspring <laughs> so when it comes to your birth and your journey down the birth canal it was probably very slow and steady so it could have been a long labour, it could have had a lot of stops and starts. So you could have been like, right, I'm coming down the birth canal now. And then you could have been like, actually, no, I want to nap for another five minutes. Because the labour was probably so slow and steady. So when I say steady, I mean not constant pain for a long time, but kind of like a bit of pain. And then about 10 minutes of just rest and then a bit of pain and so on and so on for however long it took. Your mom probably had time to do her hair and do her makeup, ready for that newborn baby pick. You could have also been a late baby, so an overdue baby. You may have even been induced. I can't imagine your birth being unpleasant. I can imagine it being as pleasant as a birth can be. But it could have just been frustratingly slow for your mom. You could have came down the birth canal so slowly that your mom was like, oh when are they gonna come when it comes to rising and shining in the morning you enjoy the comfort of your bed you're the kind of person to have loads of different textures when it comes to your bedroom so you may have some silk sheets i'm saying like these are silk these are teddy sheets so you probably have like some teddy sheets and like a teddy little sheet underneath i'm actually sitting on my son's bed not my bed <laughs> He's not a Taurus rising, but I'm a Taurus Venus, so I relate to Taurus and I love Taurians. But yeah, nice textures on the skin. Fluffiness, silks, 
just this big enclosed bedroom space where you have all of these comforting things around you. And as soon as you get out of bed, you wanna put on your silk dressing gown so you have that hanging up by the bed. Like aesthetics is a massive thing for you guys. So the bedroom will just be really nice. You'll even consider the tiny details. For instance, my Taurus Venus does this. So I place reflective items in particular places in my room because I like it when the sun comes through the window and hits the reflective items and projects like beautiful rainbow colors around my room. So you may be somebody who does stuff like that, thinks about the tiny details to make things beautiful and breathtaking. Oh, and you are the type to invest in an expensive mattress because sleep is life for you guys. You do like your sleep. You know how important it is to have your sleep and you know the importance of beauty sleep as well. Now you may need to set an alarm because you may be the type of person to sleep over and you like to wake up slow. So setting an alarm about half an hour before you've got to get up, maybe just so that you can lounge around in bed and kind of roll and just cozy up in your quilts for a little bit and then just slowly get out of bed like the beauty queen that you are and pop on that silk dressing gown. Have a nice slow coffee, maybe whilst reading the paper and then starting your morning routine. So that is your rising sign and I hope you found this video to be interesting and informative. If you resonate, please comment down below and drop me a like if you like this video. If you wanna see more content like this, please subscribe because I would love to see more of you and I shall see you next time. Bye.